Hi, my name is Vinay. I'm a product manager at Influx Data. And I'm Adam. I'm a director of engineering at Influx Data. So today we're going to talk about how scripts can help us with alerting. So Adam, how can invocable scripts help me manage my alert policy? Great question, Vinay. So um, what we can do with an invocable script is encode the policy for how we want to send messages based on different conditions that we detect um, for, from, a, from a different uh, part of our platform. Got it. Um, so in this case, what, I've, what I have is an example where we might want to alert our SRE team, mm -hmm. right? And so under what policies, when do we want to kind of alert them and, and what methods do we want to do? And so in this case, this, this would be written in flux, but you know, to keep things uh, brief, we, I just kind of have the, the main points here of what we need to do in our script. Um, so the, the first thing we do is load our messaging secrets. Okay, so you can save secrets on the platform? Yeah, yeah, this is great. So we have a, a vault instance inside of our platform where we mm -hmm. store the secrets securely, and then there's actually calls in the Flux language where you can then uh, extract those secrets. Okay, cool. So then, then after that, we can have some kind of deduping logic built into the script as well. Yeah, so some alerting systems can be, you know, very sensitive or, you know, there, there may be conditions where you just get like a whole lot of the same message over and over again. Mm -hmm. And so in this case, it, it's usually preferred to maybe discard some of those duplicates if they're all telling us the same thing. Got it. And then this is the bulk of it where you, the logic to send messages. Yeah, this is the really heavy part, right? So here is where our, our policy really starts to take shape. Mm -hmm. um, and here we have two parameters that are coming into this, this script. We have the level. Mm -hmm. So this could be like a critical warning, OK, um, info is another common one. Um, and then we also have the message that we want to send. Okay, so if this comes in to the invocable script and we say the level is critical and here's the message we want to send, this policy says, oh, this is, this is a critical failure. We need to page this person at home on their, their personal line and we right. use our PagerDuty application to set all that up. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, in a, in a different scenario where you know maybe it's just a warning and, mm -hmm. and you know we, we just want to keep an eye on it, right. we may choose to send that to our messaging platform instead. So right. in this example, you know we can send it to Slack. Got it. So, so what if we wanted to kick off some work, workflow on the basis of some uh, condition? Can we do that? Yeah. So. You, because Flux can send messages, uh, you know, basically generally using our HTTP POST package, you can send a message to really any server that, that's accessible on the web. So if you had a, a private server that was kind of part of your, your tech stack mm -hmm. uh, where you wanted to have some workflow take place whenever there was a failure, um, you could go ahead and post the message there instead. Okay, that's great. And what's the significance of like, you know, keeping the alert history? So the reason we write alert history to a bucket here uh, is really for two reasons. The first is that uh, usually after a kind of a critical failure in particular, you want to go back and look at the history of like, well, when did it fail, fail? Did we get warnings before the failure? And when did we get back to being okay? Um, those are usually really important milestones in understanding what happened so that you can prevent those problems in the future. So that's a really important reason to keep that history. And the other thing is that we reuse this history uh, to help us deduplicate alerts. So we actually, because it's time series, we can look back you know, a few moments in time and say, is this a duplicate? Okay, that's great. So this is our alert policy and it's, it's enshrined in this script. Mm -hmm. So Adam, how can we trigger the alert policy that we set up? Yeah, great question, Vinay. So uh, we can actually use the existing checks system that we've had uh, from the beginning with Influx Cloud. Okay. Um, so here we have a check that very simply checks disk space. It's a very simple metric, but it is something that SRE admins are generally very um, focused on uh, monitoring. And so here we're checking the disk space from the host disk uh, bucket. And um, you know, on this task interval, we go ahead and say, well, if, if the disk space you know, reaches a level of like 0 0.8, that's, that's a problem. We need to get someone in there to, to figure out what's wrong and to fix it and, and to get that level down. Uh, so we decide that this is a critical situation. And here we actually decide we'll go and invoke the uh, script that we had on the previous panel to alert the SRE team. And we send in the parameters that we defined previously, which were the level and the message. Okay, so this is a crit. So based on the policy, someone's going to get woken up, right? A page duty ping? Yes, it's going to go out to pager duty because we really need to get someone in here as quickly as possible right. uh, to go ahead and, and fix this Thanks problem. So. Yeah. 
okay, Adam, this is great, but can we use external sources as well? In fact, we can. So up here, what we have is actually a, a brief picture of what we had on the previous two panels. Mm -hmm. We have our check that we installed as a task, and it's able to invoke the alert SRE policy script as we showed on the previous um, page. And so um, what we can also do is that this alert SRE script mm -hmm. can be installed as an invocable script as well, which exposes a URL outside of the InfluxDB cloud platform. Okay, so then any external service can just invoke that URL. Right, so if you had some, uh, you know, a different database or some other different monitoring service or, or something else that supports your application, mm -hmm. um, it can share the same policy that you've implemented inside of InfluxDB Cloud because it can access it through this external URL. Cool. And in terms of like the support team, so here the support team can simply make a call to the policy without necessarily going into the details of the policy, right? So that, is that the, the benefit here? Yeah, I think that's a really, really great application. You know, a lot of support teams will have some kind of internal application for you know um, responding to calls and, and engaging with engineers to to get assistance when necessary. Uh, and in this case, they they could add a call to the alert policy from their application. Okay, I think that's really useful. Hope you found that useful as well. Can't wait to see what you build with it. <laughs>